Hey guys, I just wanted to uh, give you a quick update. I know uh, in the past I've done it via video and I know it makes me feel closer to you. I hope it makes you feel closer to me as well. So emails can be a little cold and feel calculating and this just feels like a, a more young life way to do things. So I love you guys. Uh, thank you uh, for your continued support in this mission of young life. So usually uh, it's an update about a kid. Uh, it's an update about a prayer request for um, something that's going on in a kid's life, something that might be going on in their family, um, with their faith, uh, things that have happened at camp when we celebrate together and see big things happen uh, as God moves uh, in these different areas of young life. But today is gonna be a little different. I need uh, to update you a little bit about my family and then ask for you uh, to, to join me in prayer. So, um, yeah, Cliff Notes version is six or seven years ago, Chrissy, uh, my wife, started having really bad heart uh, issues. Um, uh, if you back up all the way to 2005, right after Kaya was born, she had a postpartum cardiomyopathy, which just meant that one of her heart valves couldn't handle uh, all the fluid that was in her body. Uh, that is a very dumbed down version of medically what happened with my wife, but at 23 years old she was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. So uh, about six, seven years ago, uh, sitting down in a garage uh, uh, where we were living, she stood up and her heart uh, just went through her chest. Uh, uh, and she freaked out thinking that something was wrong with her heart again. So that is what, is, what, what has started a, a journey, if you will, of um, really a lot of hellish appointments of doctors um, just not being experts on what's going on with her. It's a very specialized thing that's happening with her. So uh, it's been a lot of appointments where she's left feeling deflated, uh, where I've left feeling like um, it's all in her head. Um, that it's anxiety ridden and if she dealt with the anxiety then the other stuff would go away. So it's really, it's been an issue that has separated us as a couple. Uh, it has become a very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It has become a very uh, divisive um, area in our marriage. So uh, as of about a year and a half ago, we started seeing a lot of improvement with this. So for you know much of five years, she was bedridden. Um, you know, uh, when she would get up, uh, her heart would race and she would uh, feel panicked and then she would lay back down and kind of just felt confined to our bed. Um, so uh, about a year and a half ago, we started seeing some improvement. Um, she had been diagnosed with something called Chiari malformation, which is the back of her skull isn't round like it should be, so it forces the, the back side of her brain down into her spinal column. Uh, and what that creates is no spinal fluid to the back side of her brain. Um, so that causes headaches, dizziness, fatigue, uh, just generally not feeling well. When you or me, when we're complaining about sinus issues, uh, like barometric pressure type of stuff, uh, she's knocked out with a migraine and her head feels like it's in a vice. So uh, we've been trying to treat that and, and somewhere in treating that, we ended up uh, on a regimen that made the heart issues go away. Or at least what we think now is that it was masking it. Whatever medication she was on for the Chiari was masking um, the issues with her, her, her brain and her heart. So where we're at today is Chrissy has uh, something called POTS. Uh, it stands for something that I can't pronounce. The T is uh, tachycardia. Uh, so it's an issue with the heart. So basically the way I understand it in layman's terms is her brain um, thinks that her heart needs adrenaline. It's a fight or flight type of deal. Uh, her nervous system kind of fighting against itself. And so from, from laying down, she'll be at 90 beats per minute. And when she stands up, it skyrockets to anywhere between 130 and 160. Um, so just standing up, her brain says, we need adrenaline for this and dumps adrenaline, which makes her heart skyrocket, which terrifies her. Uh, so in the last week, we've been in the ER twice. And um, so it's, it's been really hard uh, for her to feel like she's made so much progress. Um, we've seen so much life in her at home. Uh, she's really um, taken our nephew under, uh, under her care uh, while our sister has been working and 
and just some life events with her. So that's really given Chrissy a lot of joy. Um, so she can't even take care of herself right now. Um, like I said, every time she stands up, her heart rate skyrockets. So we have a cardiologist appointment next week. Uh, we had one for yesterday and it was canceled. Uh, and every time something like that happens, uh, it, it, it spirals her emotionally because uh, it feels like every appointment is going to be an answer. We're going to lead towards some direction or another. Um, so cardiologist next Tuesday and then we're trying to get into a POT specialist to try to get some medication to even this stuff out. Because we've seen uh, that with the right uh, medication for the adrenaline issue, it's, it's really helpful for her. So the problem with that is too much of the medicine makes her like a zombie, not enough of the medicine. Uh, kind of like when you have the flu and you start feeling better so you overdo it. Uh, so, so we've got to find that gentle balance. And uh, I, uh, I'm afraid that that's gonna take a, a while. So uh, just pray for us in that, uh, that we would uh, be graceful with each other. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons I wanted to connect with you today is the other day while we were dealing with one of these episodes I was laying with her um, just kind of trying to figure out what we're gonna do and I reached over and I, I put my fingers on her pulse and I felt her heart racing uh, she had just stood up I kind of doubled over grabbed her head and I just don't feel good and then laid back down and I reached over and and, and, and touched her pulse and for the first time in all of this battle um, I touched her, I, I, I touched her heart, if you will. Uh, I felt her heart. And um, it became more real to me than it ever has of what exactly she's going through. Like, you know, she's, she's not, there was nothing to be anxious for. There was no, like, for me, that moment was the most real it's ever been that my wife has no control over this. Um, and that broke my heart for her and it broke my heart for the way that I failed her, and it was very convicting. Um, so just, I guess, one of the things I wanted to encourage you is if you're married, like, how long has it been since you felt your spouse's heart? Um, connected with them on struggles they may have, celebrated with them. Um, you know, there's so much pride wrapped up in marriage sometimes that um, just as the years go on, we forget how to celebrate with one another. We forget how to really love one another. And we forget how to how to feel each other's hearts. So, so I want to encourage you with that today to just feel each other's hearts. And uh, finally, I just need your prayer. Um, Young Life is still happening. Uh, we still have ministry. We still have a camp trip coming up. Uh, that we want to fill a bus because we know how important it is for kids to hear from Jesus. Uh, but my family is broken right now. And um, yeah, I just need prayer. Pray for Chrissy, uh, that God would intervene, that God would um, bring comfort to her while we're trying to get all these things figured out, um, that there would be quick solution, that there'd be no more canceled appointments, that uh, doctors would take her seriously, that doc doctors would uh, know what to do if they are um, not equipped to care for her, that they would uh, set aside any pride they have and, and say, I want to refer you to somebody who might know what they're doing. Um, and then pray for me, uh, that I'm kind to my wife. Um, that I'm loving to her, that I love her the way that Christ loves us um, unconditionally and uh, expecting nothing in return. So, and then pray for Kaya because, uh, you know, Kaya is such a strong human being. Uh, Kaya, 13 years old, about to finish middle school, and um, she just keeps such a positive view on life. And she just pushes through and she just, uh, she asked me yesterday, she said, just please tell me if there's anything I can do around the house that helps. And that's uh, a glimpse of my daughter's heart. So pray for her, just that she wouldn't lose that in this, uh, that there'd be no resentment for me uh, and Chrissy uh, as we're not operating like we normally do. And then uh, pray for the ministry, um, just that uh, leaders, might step up in areas that they didn't know they wanted to lead, uh, where I might be leaving gaps right now. So uh, thank you. Uh, you're getting this email because you are a part of my family. Um, so thank you 
for always being supportive, whether it's with your time, with your treasure, uh, with your talents. Uh, I just so appreciate you and what you mean to me in this ministry. So God's doing a good thing through Young Life in Southwest Michigan, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to be uh, operating on all cylinders again. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much for your love. Peace.